Hello everybody. Today I'm going to talk about this clock that I built. It's based on a 64 by 32 LED matrix that you can get off, say, Adafruit or Amazon for about 30 bucks. And as you can see, it's showing falling particles that correspond to the time and the speed and color of the particles help you tell what time it is. You can see how the color of the particles correspond to the time. So there's a number of different views. This is the default view you get, but there's also a view that doesn't include the numbers because like I said, because it shows different colors and speeds, you can actually learn to read the clock without the numbers. There's also a few other modes that I added. And of course, if you know a little bit of coding, you could always add your own because this is an open source project. Uh, this is another view that just shows numbers falling. The size and speed correspond to the digits, and we're still using the colors. Uh, another view that still uses the colors, but more of a flame effect. And then another view that kind of shows a drop effect. And then you can shut the whole thing off. You can also configure the clock to automatically shut off at night and turn back on in the morning at times you choose. Um, you can either have it keep the same display or you can set it to change the display, cycle through them at a time interval that you choose. So that's about all I'm going to say about the clock now. We're going to get into how I built it. But to start, let's just take a quick look at the back. So we have a Raspberry Pi Pico that controls everything. The power comes in to the Pico and the Pico powers the display. And we have buttons on the bottom. And then we have a real-time clock unit which keeps the time accurate. And it also provides a battery backup. So let's go ahead and look at how I built this thing. All right, so now I'm going to look at the schematic real quick. So this is KiCad, and we have a schematic and a PCB layout. So let's take a look at the schematic. Zoom in a little bit here. So we just have the Raspberry Pi Pico, the NCP380 current regulator, which is optional, by the way, because it's mostly a safety device. Um, the LED can pull up to three amps of current, and we're sourcing that LED through VBUS, which is directly connected to the USB. So the bottlenecks are going to be the um, traces on the Pico and the USB power source itself, but 500 milliamps is probably a good maximum here, so that's what this is set to. And there's a RTC interface, real-time clock. Um, we have communication lines. This is I squared C. We're going to be powering this from 3.3 volts instead of 5 because I squared C is a pull-up architecture. Um, so we don't want to power this with 5 or these guys would be at 5 as well, which would be bad for this chip over here. So we use 3.3 and everything is good as long as the RTC works, which it does in my case and I presume most cases. Uh, we also have the LED interface. This is also a 5 volt part. These are all directly driven by 3.3. Um, no pull up here. These are all just passive inputs. So the only risk here is you might, the LED at 5 volts might not recognize these three, three connections as legitimate high levels. But in my case, it works just fine with a direct connect. Let's take a look at the schematic real quick. I mean, PCB, excuse me. Uh, so there's the layout. The layout is mainly designed so that it will fit cleanly on the back of the board. I have power for LED, a capacitor, and we have the interface for the buttons here, the interface for the RTC, and the Pico itself, which I'm soldering directly to the board. All right, 12 days after ordering these things, I got them in the mail today. It's kind of exciting because I wasn't expecting to get them until tomorrow or after. So let's take a look for the first time together. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Okay, so that's the clear mask substrate. I can't say I love it. Um, you can see the writing on there. 
and everything else, but I think from now on I'll either go with green or purple or black, but it's worth trying once. And the good positive aspect is you can definitely see the wiring, which is kind of neat. So, yeah, there it is. Okay, I tested out the connections with the multimeter and everything looks good. So I went ahead and soldered the Pico on there. One of my favorite things about the Pico is it has these end connectors so you can solder it directly to a board. And then I just put a simple blink program on there to make sure that the Pico is functional. I probably should have done that before soldering it, but I have yet to run into a bad Pico, so I guess I got a little confident and lucked out at the same time. Okay, a quick test of the power components. So I just soldered a plug on there and then connected that up just through a diode real quick. So it is functional. But yeah, it looks like it is now working and it's being powered off of its um off of this with the protection so we're good so the buttons are just a simple one-sided uh, PCB so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that out with the CNC machine and there's no point in waiting a week for this All right, all done. All right, a handful of minutes on the CNC, and now we have a little PCB that we can mount the buttons to. If you're interested in more details on how the CNC stuff works, I have a separate video in my video list and an Instructables on it, so check that out. All right, parts finished. Um, so yeah, two simple buttons with a plug, and it will plug in to the board right there, and the buttons will be facing like that. I'm going to talk a little bit about the hardware build, which is supported by a 3D print. So I'm using software, free software called OpenSCAD. So for this software, your design looks like code. And it's pretty intimidating at first, as you might imagine. But you can, once you get used to it, I find it quite nice to work with. Anyway, we start with the LCD panel. And then we can add the main PCB to that and here you can see the real-time clock and the PCB and then here's where the buttons are gonna go so the only thing left is two 3d printed parts a top support and a bottom support so here's the bottom support so that just holds everything in place and then a top support um, provides a mounting post and this mesh here holds all the cabling down. So I started printing the supports that's going to go on the back and it basically holds all the electronics and cabling in place and give us a wall mount. Because of the size of the panel I have to print it as two pieces. So we'll print this one which will take about three and a half hours and then I'll print the other one which will take another three and a half hours. Hopefully I don't run out of filament. <laughs> So when it finished printing, I got kind of excited and forgot to take video of it on the printer, but here it is printed out and it did a great job. I already bolted in the buttons and they work fine and fit well. And here is the piece itself that is designed to just slot in and that's also a very nice fit. And this just goes on here like this and that also all lines up real nice I don't have the cables on there yet but you can kind of see how it's gonna go together and that's what it looks like on the bottom so now I just got to print the top half and then I can finish it up top section finished printing a couple minutes ago I think I have all the parts I need now so it's just a matter of assembling everything 
I did some supports here just for this overhang because it actually locks in with the other piece with a single bolt going through. Let's put it together. It's all buttoned up on the back, so that's what it looks like on the back. I need to plug that in yet. There's the bottom, and there's the front. So it will hang on the wall with that hanger there and plug it in the bottom. Pretty minimalistic, but that was the idea. Congratulations, you've reached the end of this video. I hope that you learned something and got interested in these LED panels because I think they really are kind of cool as a basis for a number of projects. If you enjoyed the video, please consider a like and a subscribe, and I will talk to you sometime in the future. Bye.